morning, church. Good morning. Welcome to worship as we gather in person here in the building and online. As we gather being reminded that we are loved by God, that we're saved through what Jesus does for us on the cross, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we're called back out into the world to share God's love with everyone we come in contact with. You'll notice in the bulletin that there is a lot just right on the horizon for us here at Living Waters. Um, today, there will be Sunday school and a second installment of our book club as we uh, continue conversation about a book called When Bad Things Happen to Good People. Um, and if you want to just join that conversation, you're more than welcome to. We also um, th today are celebrating our partnership with Lynn Bloomstead, um, a, a community that is geared towards uh, the second half of life um, and living with dignity and, and being able to make uh, choices as we move through the ends of our lives um, back home to heaven's house. And so um, we're th I'm very thankful today to have Pastor Tim Overweight with us. He will be our guest preacher. And then several of the staff um, from Lynn Bloomston are here as well, including our own Gail Anderson. Um, and then Stacey Henrik, who has been officing in, uh, in our building for almost a year. It's almost a year. That's amazing. Um, and so um, I encourage you to check, uh, check out the information that they have. One of the things, too, about celebrating this partnership is that we as a congregation, Living Waters, are now a partner, a member congregation of Lynn Bloomston, because they're going to be our neighbor, just down at Hodgson and Jay. And so uh, if you hear some of the things, as you hear about what Lynn Bloomston is about, if that sparks an interest in you, um, we need to provide two people who will be kind of liaison between Lynn Bloomston and here and vice versa. And so if you're interested in that, come talk to me. Um, also coming up, as you see in the bulletin, next week is our chili challenge and silent auction. If you have an auction item, we have sheets for you to fill out of what the, what the item is and what the value and those kinds of things. Um, and if you are interested in bringing chili, there's a sign-up sheet for that. But we want to make sure that all of you are here next week. It will be immediately following worship that the chili will be available. And uh, the auction will be open from, from 11 to about 2.15. So there are super fun items on there. Everything from um, artwork and uh, baskets for kids to experiences like making homemade pretzels. Some of you may have heard our, my family makes homemade pretzels, and we'll teach you how. We won't teach you the secret ingredient, but we'll teach you how to make them. Um, experiences like that, inclu and including tickets to the wild and tickets to the twins. So um, we encourage you to be part of that. And that is a fundraiser for the ministries here at Living Waters, and, some of, and part of the proceeds will be going to the food shelf as well. Also in your bulletin is information about Lent. It's right around the corner. Ash Wednesday is February 22nd. And our theme for Lent will be Open My Life, Lord. And so on Wednesday nights, we'll have soup and worship, followed by a conversation around contemplative prayer, which is a, uh, a way of just uh, sitting with God versus laying out to God our requests. And so that will happen on Wednesdays, and then Sunday mornings we'll be following that same theme, Open My Life. And so we'll, we're looking for people to help with the soup suppers and, and be part of the study. So please join us for that. Mark your calendars. Those are all of the announcements for, for today. I invite you to stand as you are able as we continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal. We confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your mercy and love with others. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, 
Forgive us so that we may be reconciled to one another. In the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. As we sing our opening song, we encourage the kids to gather our quarters. This morning I had to empty our quarter pool because it was full. Kids, collect the quarters, and then we encourage you to use the, the words on the screen um, for our song today. We will walk, uh, I want Jesus to walk with you. Let us sing and collect quarters. Who seek him with their whole heart. Who 
you also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. At this time, I'd like to invite the children forward for the children's sermon. And as the kids come up, I want all of us to think about the age that you are right now, what is good about it? What is good about it? Is Nora the only one that's coming up? Oh, Ian, you're going to come? Oh, good. Um, oh, and Andrew and Alex. Okay, so I, the congregation is thinking about what is good about being how old they are. What is good about being a kid? You don't have to do taxes. You don't have to do taxes. Oh. I know what's happened, been happening in your house. You don't have to go to work, but you do have to do something. You have to go to school. You, you have to or you get to? You have to. You have to. Is there recess? At least they have recess. So you don't have to. The best things about being a kid, anything else? What is, anything else about being a kid? That's eating candy. Playing video games. Playing video games. What? My daddy teaches peanut butter cups. So. Well, yes, us adults like candy too. But you guys seem to, I mean, it's coming up on Valentine's Day, you probably are going to get some candy there. But that's not what I'm talking about. So the best things about being a kid are you don't have to do taxes. You get to have, oh, you get to eat pie. That's the cross of the You don't have to bake stuff. You don't have to bake stuff. Food is just prepared for you. You know, I actually made my own cheese sandwich with mayo. Oh, way to go, man. I made my own cheese so, so being a kid has some really great things, right? How about um, adults in the adults in the room? Just shout out what's what's one thing that's great about being the age you are? Wisdom. Wisdom. Yeah. Often comes at a hard cost, but yes, wisdom. What else? You get to stay up all night. You get to stay up all night. That's <laughs> you get to take a nap when you want to. Did it a bunch of times. Uh, Katie just shouted out, "You get to take a nap when you want to." Yeah. Well, you, do you, you, you can do whatever you want. Anything else that, as an adult, you can buy retirement. Oh, you can yeah. Buy lots of stuff. Oh, the kids say you can buy stuff. Not getting, getting broke my arms. Not getting broke my arms. So there. So what I want us to think about, and as buy we, whatever you want. <laughs> You can. Hopefully, you have money to do it, though, right? I want to buy a brand new car. Well, you got to make sure you have enough money in your piggy bank, right? What I want us all to think about and to kind of hold hold in in our minds as we go through today and this week is that where you are right now in life, whatever age you are, whether you're a kid going to school or you're in you're in work or you're retired or you're you're towards the farther end of the spectrum. That there is joy, and God brings goodness out of wherever we are. And so even though we might struggle from time to time, or we might feel the, the age in our bones, or we might feel like it's not quite fair yet that we don't get to do things, there is blessing in this moment of time. All right? Can we pray real quick? We should never pray real quick. We should always pray. We never pray. Let's pray. Okay? Ready? I'm going to repeat after me. Repeat after me. Oh, someone got it out there. Everybody repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For being with us. For being with us. In this moment. In this time. In this time. At this age. Be with us always. Be with us always. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you guys for coming up. I invite you to stand as we sing our gospel acclamation.
morning, everyone. I'm so glad to be able to be here with you. Thank you for allowing um, someone else to stand up here and bring a message to you. Uh, my name is Tim Overwake. I am the executive director of the Ling Bloomston Foundation. And today, as you've heard, is Ling Bloomston Sunday. It's going to be a day when we get to know a little bit more about you, you get to know a little bit more about us. So I want to begin first with the message, with the mission of Ling Bloomston. Influenced by Christ, Ling Bloomston provides a ministry of compassionate care and innovative services to older adults in order to preserve and enhance their quality of life. That's what Ling Bloomston is all about. I, I, I'm not going to talk about, any more about Ling Bloomston this morning. There's a table out there that gives you all the information that you could ever want to know. I would encourage you as you leave, if there's something there you think you might like to know more about, stop and talk to Julie or Stacy. There's materials, and that's a great opportunity um, to get to know a little bit more, of, uh, more about language. But growing old, growing old is the one thing that we want to be able to do, but we really don't want to do, do we? We want to be able to grow old, but we really don't want to go through that process. There's no antidote for it. We all know that. There's nothing you can do about it. So I guess I would say the best thing we can do is kind of stand up straight, face it, walk into it with all the dignity and grace and, and realism and humor that we possibly could have. So I'm, I'm not going to talk about what Ling Lewiston does, but what I'm going to talk about this morning, what I want us to focus on is growing old for the glory of God. Not being old for the glory of God, but growing old for the glory of God. See, it doesn't matter whether you're sitting up here in the security of childhood, or you're in the freedom and excitement of, of, of being a teenager, or you are raising a family or growing a career. It doesn't matter if you are already comfortably retired, or maybe you're facing down the last years of of your life doesn't matter where you are because growing old for the glory of God is something that we can all get better at something that we can all work at there's a biblical character that I think can help us do this his name is Caleb Caleb's an Old Testament character I hope that you've heard of him but he was 85 years old when, when we meet him in this passage that I'm going to read here in just a second. And as we look at Caleb's life, I think there's just two things this morning that I think can be helpful to us, no matter where we are along life's road, in helping us grow old for the glory of God. So I'm going to read uh, the book of Joshua, the Old Testament book of Joshua, chapter 14, uh, verses 6 through 12. Now the men of Judah appeared, approached Joshua of Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jeph Jephunneh, the Kezanite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me. I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my brothers who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt with fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day, Moses swore to me, The land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance, and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now that just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses, 
while Israel moved about in the desert. So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I am just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified, but the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. So we find Caleb. Caleb has been promised this piece of land 45 years earlier. And since he was promised that, he has spent 40 years wandering in the desert with the people of Israel who are not happy of what was going on. Uh, and Caleb finds himself with all these folks. Here we have a man that fully believed in, in the ability and the power of God to deliver what he had promised. But Caleb was also handcuffed to 40 years of waiting because of the unbelief of his peers. So finally the conquest begins. Caleb spends another five years under the leadership of Joshua and it's 45 years later when we encounter Caleb here and he is still waiting. So here's the first thing that I believe can help us grow old for the glory of God. When God calls you to wait, keep waiting. Psalm 27 says, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart, and wait for the Lord. Psalm 130 says, I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. Exodus 14, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to wait. And then in Isaiah 46, even to your old age and gray hair, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I made you and I will carry you. All these verses and many more tell us to wait and to stop worrying about whether God is going to come through for us. Because he has. And he is. And he will. So maybe right now you are waiting on God for something. What is it for you? Maybe you need some direction in life. Maybe you're, maybe you're worried sick about someone in your life. You're worried about some situation in your life. Maybe you're waiting for someone to forgive you. Maybe you're waiting for a, a child, a loved one. To turn their life around. Maybe you have a relationship that needs to be mended. I went through, unfortunately, I went through a divorce in 2013. And my two sons, who are now grown men, are still trying to find their way through that hurt. And our relationship is broken. And I have asked God for healing and restoration for those relationships more times than I can count. And over the years, as I, as I was reading the Bible, that I would come across something that touched me or I felt was relevant, I would... I would make a note, or I would underline it or highlight it. Like, for instance, here in Psalm 6. 
Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am faint. My soul is in anguish. How long, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. All night long I flood my bed with weeping. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. For the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. Those are all underlined. And there's a note at the top that says January 14, 2002. I'm still waiting. As I stand before you today, I'm still waiting. And many times I have wanted to just throw in the towel and give up because from my perspective, if nothing has changed after two decades, why would it change now? But what helps me is I go back to the words of Matthew 19. Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Why would God promise a piece of land to Caleb and then wait 45 years to give it to him? Why would God promise Abraham and Sarah a child so long before that child actually came? Why would God promise a Savior so many years before Jesus actually showed up? Why would God make us wait so long for the things that we ache for? The things that we want so much. He does it to fortify our trust in Him as he proves faithful. God doesn't give us trust. He gives us opportunities to trust Him. He gives us opportunities to, to bulk up our trust when His methods and timing are nowhere near ours. He gives us opportunities to be reminded that his perspective is all of eternity. Ours is just this, this tiny, tiny little slice. He gives us opportunities to learn that waiting is not just fatalistic resignation. Waiting is living out each day confident that God will provide the conclusions and the meaning. So if you have been waiting for something significant from God for a long time, maybe even decades, keep waiting. Keep waiting and in doing so, grow old for the glory of God. Caleb also teaches us one other thing about what it means to grow old for the glory of God. And I think it's this. When you are a child of Almighty God, you never retire from His service. Most of us here are, are planning for retirement, I'm assuming, or maybe you are retired in some way from your work or your career. Please don't think that that means that we can retire from our service to God. If you read that whole story of Caleb, you'll find that six times he says that he served God wholeheartedly. And I'm going to assume that that means that Caleb served God right up to the very last day of his life. To me, that's what wholeheartedly means. And so even though Joshua and Caleb 
were old, God reminded them, you know what, I'm not through with you yet, guys. God needed a couple of octogenarians to get his work done. Now, we would expect God to say, or maybe we would prefer God to say, uh, guys, you know what, you've done a great job, really. I, I'm, I'm happy with what you've done, but frankly, you're getting a little old. You don't move like you used to. So just find a recliner, and you just enjoy it, and I'm going to use some youngsters now. You see, but God not only preserved the service for the individual, he preserved the individual for the service. And Caleb didn't deny, he didn't deny at all that there was there were some really tough foes in the promised land. He understood the battles that were facing them. And, and, and the work that we are called to do, wherever we are in age, it is tough. What we're called to do as Christians can be very tough because the foes that we face take on all kinds of different forms. Fragile relationships, weariness, tragedy, loneliness, feelings of boredom or feeling that I, I just don't have a purpose anymore. I don't, I don't have an impact anymore in life. We battle our own personal fears. We battle our own our own predispositions, and they just they just wear us out. We get tired. We get bruised, and we forget that God says, "I am He who made you. I will sustain you. I will carry you to the very end." Part of God's purpose, I. Think, I believe. And, and part of God's purpose in keeping us here on this earth, letting us grow older, is so that we can pass wisdom, like she said, down to those that are younger than us. And I think the church will be greatly blessed when those who are older, like me, re realize that we never retire from serving God, but that we can mentor those who are younger than us, and in doing so, build faithful leadership to take the church into the future. That's not easy. It can be hard work, but I really don't think it's as overwhelming or as complicated as we like to think. Younger people are not looking for anybody perfect. They're just looking for someone who will love them who will stand with them, who will answer their questions honestly, and who will teach them to love God first, and then to love their neighbor. Yes, serving God is not a job. It's our calling. It's our responsibility. And you may think that God cannot or will not use you because you're too old, you're too ordinary, Please don't believe that. Keep serving. Stay available. See, we're not released until we stand before Jesus. And he sees us across the room and he's got a huge smile and his arms are open wide. And he says, welcome home. I am so glad to see you. You are really going to enjoy what I have planned for you here. I'm wondering, do we have any Caleb's here today? Is there anyone 80 year old? Wave your hand. 80 year old, or wave your hand. You know what? Thank you for being here. Thank you for serving Jesus still to this day. I think we need to give those folks a round of applause.
Keep doing it. Because you have so much to give us. Thank you for that. See, growing old for the glory of God means waiting when God calls us to wait and trusting that he will come through. It means using whatever strength and eyesight and hearing and mobility and experience and wisdom and resources that we have left for his service. It means we live our lives in delight of Jesus Christ and we bring others to that enjoyment. If you pray with me. God, thank you for being with us from the moment we took our first breath until the moment we take our last and every single moment in between. And I pray that as we grow older every single one of those days and march toward the day when you call us home, that we would be growing older for your glory, that we would wait when you call us to wait, that we would trust you to respond and to come through for us, and that we would take advantage of every opportunity of service that you give us. I pray for your blessing upon this church and these people, that they would be a beacon and a light in this community, and that they would work hard to care for and bless the Caleb's in their sphere of interest. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, and whom we take great delight.
I invite the congregation to stand as you are able as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As we come to our time of prayer, we'll end each petition with Lord in your mercy and, and invite you to respond with hear our prayer. Call together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Inspire your church that it may be a sign of life throughout the world. From the exploration of faith with children and new believers to missionaries and bishops, shape lives of faithfulness so that all find abundant life in your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nourish your creation, accompany all who plant and water. Bless the work of farmers, provide for those facing drought and climate change. Guide the work of agricultural scientists towards sustainable ways to feed the world. As we witness the power of creation to shape and move under our feet through the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria, move the global community to action, bring comfort to all those affected, and speed aid to the places most in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give new life where all there seems to be is death and destruction. In nations and regions where reconciliation seems impossible, especially in Russia and Ukraine, in Israel and Palestine, in neighborhoods and in households where conflict spills over to violence. Empower each of us to be peacemakers in our lives through the guidance of your spirit. Where death holds sway through violence, disease, and hunger, reveal your power and peace. Lord, in your moments, hear our prayer. Nurture all you need. Jacob, Chris, Carl, Jack, Amy Gokayat, Austin, Joe, Rhonda, Nathan, Mitch, Lori, Kathy, Gabe, Jackie, Lori, Leo, Sue, Griffin, and sustain those grieving the Braun family and the Webb family. Bring healing to all who experience trauma caused by systems of injustice and destructive relationships. Give courage to those struggling to repent and those seeking reconciliation. Sustain all who work for restoration. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Encourage this congregation. Call us to a common purpose and keep us from quarreling. Turn our hearts toward you and guide our leaders so that our choices may be life-giving for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We rejoice in the partnerships that you have brought to this community, especially the work and companionship of Lane Winston. Continue to move in their work with the elders in our communities and empower us to serve side by side so that all may be blessed with dignity and care through every age. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thanks be to you for the lives of all who have died in Christ. Teach us to follow them in your ways and gather us with them into the promise of eternal life with you. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O oh God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace as you feel comfortable to those around you.
Our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes once more. Let us join our voices and our hearts together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite our communion servers forward to prepare for serving communion. We'll, we'll, and you'll be invited forward by our ushers to come to the front here where I will have bread. And then invite you to step to either side where there is uh, wine and juice in the trays. The juice is the lighter colored liquid. And then uh, one step further to put the cup into the basket. We need one more adult to help us. Thank you, Angela. Come for all is ready.
I invite you to rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Receive God's blessing. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod. Straight, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Let us sing together our sending song, and we invite the kids to join me back at the baptismal font as we sing. 